One Zambia, One Nation, thank you so much for joining us on the news desk. This is Anis News. We are coming to you from the mass media complex in Lusaka. Burundi president to grace agricultural and commercial show. Rabies vaccination commences in northern province. Mansa Municipal Council procures earth moving equipment. Plus, government pledges commitment to reversing biodiversity loss. With the details, my name is Emos Zulu and on sign language is Joas Shikombwe. The Agricultural and Commercial Cooperative Society of Zambia Limited has announced that this year's 95th, 96th Agricultural and Commercial Show will be officially opened by the President of Burundi, Evariste Ndayashimi. Meanwhile, Agricultural and Commercial Cooperative Society of Zambia Limited President Bernard Monga has disclosed that the official opening will be held on Saturday, 3rd August 2024. Mona Chibende has more in this report. Over 1,000 exhibitors are expected to showcase their products and services at this year's 96th Agriculture and Commercial Show. The Agriculture and Commercial Show Cooperative Society of Zambia Limited hinted that more space has been allocated to the promotion of smart agriculture. From our part, from our end, we, we are very ready. Uh, we expect the uh, doors for the show to open tomorrow at 6 o'clock and close at uh, uh, 18 hours in the evening. Uh, if you go around the showgrounds right now, um, exhibitors are, are doing the final touches. Some of them are ready. Our judges are getting ready to also come through to do the judging tomorrow. And uh, our message to um, the showgoers and uh, our exhibitors is that uh, the 96th uh, show is on and ready. Uh, please uh, let's also take into consideration um, guidelines from the Ministry of Health on uh, influenza. So we, we, we haven't concluded, but we know that we have over a thousand exhibitors. Um, already so far. I think there are those last minute exhibitors who are still coming in to, to set up. We have indeed over a thousand in terms of booking, but some of them are, are coming up now to take up their spaces. Uh, but I know uh, by the time we get to um, uh, Thursday or Friday, we should be able to collect the actual uh, final number of exhibitors. Yeah. Um, of course, the uh, theme for this year is uh, creating a competitive future. And I think that um, we're living in uh, a period where we, we have experienced certain challenges relating to climate change. Uh, I would like to say that um, we're expecting a lot of uh, interesting uh, exhibitions uh, during this period. We do have uh, a green pavilion where those in the renewable uh, energy space uh, will be uh, exhibiting there. And also remember that uh, because of the drought, all the players who are in the agricultural space in terms of climate resilient uh, varieties, uh, irrigation solutions, and all other uh, agricultural services will also be within the um, uh, showgrounds. So this is a must uh, attend show. Meanwhile, preparations for this year's agriculture and commercial show have reached an advanced stage with some exhibitors making final touches ahead of the opening. We have recipients of um, those business loans, or let me just say we have some of those recipients exhibiting here, and they'll be coming to showcase their story. So we encourage the general public to come through, visit the CEC stand, right opposite the Zambia stand, to come and get a feel of the impact of CEC support across the country. Aside from that, we're just bringing some of our services closer to the citizenry, uh, looking at the numbers that will be coming to the showgrounds for um, the show. So basically, Rhino Zama is into drip irrigation, water tanks and uh, the water pumps and a lot of irrigation activities here. So if you are visiting uh, showgrounds for this agricultural show, which is 96th agricultural show, definitely you should come to stand A2, uh, which is just behind Zambia Police or Stanbic. We are primarily into drip irrigation, the, the drip, drip tapes and uh, the water tanks. If you're looking for good quality drip tapes and water tanks, definitely Rhino Zamagro is the place to visit. As you can see, this is a Nisa stand. We are trying to make the final touches. I'm sure by the end of the day, we'll be ready. Yeah, 
So we have um, six centers and we'll be exhibiting all the centers that we have from National Institute for Scientific and Industrial Research. I would like to say, to invite uh, show viewers that uh, they are welcome to come and see our stand. So we have var various uh, items that we're going to be exhibiting from different departments. So we have uh, water and environment department who will be showing what they are doing in the, in the department and various activities. We have Energy Development Research Centre. They'll also be showcasing their products. This year's Agriculture and Commercial Show, which is slated to run from Wednesday, 31st July to 5th August 2024, will be commemorated under the theme, Creating a Competitive Future. Munach Wendefozanis, in Lusaka. The Department of Veterinary Services in Northern Province has commenced the vaccination exercise against rabies in some selected districts of the province. Provincial Veterinary Officer Sidney Kalenga says the exercise follows the sporadic cases of rabies recorded in some districts. Dr. Kalenga says the department is receiving support from government to conduct the vaccination exercise. So in Northern Province, we, we've had sporadic uh, cases of uh, rabies and we have declared rabies in a number of districts uh, so far. But uh, it suffices to say that we are on top of things, uh, trying to control rabies. So we received support from, uh, from government and we are doing vaccinations right now in Mungwi, Kasama, as well as um, uh, other places like Wingu. So we have also incorporated other districts that are being supported by uh, local authorities, like in Upososhi, as well as in Bala, that have been uh, supported in that line. So there are various interventions that we are putting in place. Uh, apart from vaccinations, we are also cooperating with um, our stakeholders, in terms of sensitizing the public concerning the dangers of rabies and also making sure that uh, those dogs that are unmanned they are also cropped and then we also check this. And more than 24,000 children under the age of five in Shiwoyunji district have been vaccinated against polio during the just ended polio vaccination campaign. We have more in the following report. The first round of polio vaccination campaign in Shiboyunji district of Central Province has been described as a success. Shiboyunji district health director Dr. Ivan Smulea says the district surpassed the threshold. So the target that we had as as, as the district was 22,600 children that are under the age of five. However, by the end of yesterday, we had vaccinated uh, 24,000 plus. That means we went through. We went. Uh, above the, the target. All in all, this is not what was our core target. The real target is to vaccinate every child. And that is the reason why we are following up with those that could have missed during the campaign for today and tomorrow. And parents in the area have commended the government for improved healthcare services in rural areas. We would like to thank our able government uh, with the, the health the job which they are doing now, going around door by door, vaccinating for polio, which is not easy for someone to move during the day, every day up to sunset, moving, doing the same job. Uh, as the community, standing for the people at large in Sharovala and all areas, especially Karunduad, which I've seen it, I think the job which they are doing, the health people, uh, we appreciate for that. Behind this success is a dedicated cadre of health workers and community volunteers. The program was successful, even though it was a bit challenging, especially in fishing camps like Mombo, where, where we had the challenge when we reached that side. We find that other, other children were shifted. They went like Kulongo, so it was a bit challenging to start following those children. But at least here in nearby villages, we are able to forgive each and every child. All in all, the program was very successful. Every child in our catchment area was being vaccinated. Tina Kavamba reporting for Zanis in Shibonji District, Central Province. In other news, Zambia has today joined the rest of the world in commemorating the World Day Against Trafficking in Persons. Ministry of Home Affairs and Internal Security Permanent Secretary Dixon Matembo, who officiated at the event, says Zambia is vigorously combating human trafficking. Take a look. 
Stakeholders from all walks of life today commemorated the 2024 World Day Against Trafficking in Persons. Ministry of Home Affairs and Internal Security Permanent Secretary Dixon Matembo laid the commemorations, which started with a march pass from Osaka's East Park Mall to Long Acres Mall. In his address, Mr. Matembo highlighted that children are the most vulnerable to the crime and that they need to be protected. It is therefore gratifying that uh, this year's commemoration have a direct focus on the critical population, that is children. We are commemorating this day under the theme, Leave No Child Behind in the Fight Against Human Trafficking. Children represent a significant pro, uh, proportion of victims of human trafficking worldwide, with girls being excessively affected. Additionally, children are twice likely to face violence during trafficking than adults. This year's theme is urging us to focus on the flight, plight of children, the need to protect the children, and the resolve to end child Trafficking. And UN Zambia resident coordinator highlighted that global statistics show that every one in three victims of human trafficking is a child and that the UN remains committed to support the fight against the crime. According to the latest global report on trafficking in persons by the United Nations Office on Drug and Crimes, one in every three victims of human trafficking is a child. Children are trafficked for various purposes, such as sexual exploitation, forced labor, domestic servitude, begging, criminal activities, and organ removal. The International Organization for Migration shared the operating guide to assist all law enforcement personnel in their fight against human trafficking, and the Save the Children organization used the opportunity to launch the five-year bilateral anti-human trafficking program as explained by the program director. The program was strategically worked to strengthen the capacity of the government of Zambia and civil society organizations to sustainably respond to all forms of human trafficking. The program is anchored on the international four pillar framework for effective responses to human trafficking. This year's commemoration was held under the theme Leave No Child Behind in the Fight Against Human Trafficking. Sarah Miti reporting for Zanis in Osaka. Across the borders, Ministry of Defense Permanent Secretary Norman Chipakupaku says Zambia remains committed to efforts aimed at devising measures to ensure sustainable peace and security in the region. Mr. Chipakupaku says the growing threats of terrorism and violent extremism pose a threat, pose a security threat to the Southern African region as evidenced by ongoing insurgent activities in some countries in the region which have potential to spread to other nations if not curtailed. He was speaking today in Swakomund, Namibia as co-chairperson during the opening of the officials meeting at the 25th session of the Namibia-Zambia Joint Permanent Commission, JPC, on security, on defense and security. The Zambian delegation, led by the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Defense, Norman Chipakupaku, arrived yesterday in Namibia to attend the 25th session of the Namibia-Zambia Joint Permanent Commission on Defense and Security, JPC. The delegation today attended the opening of the officials meeting in the coastal region of Swakopmund. Here, they assured Namibia of Zambia's commitment to ensuring there is peace and stability in the region. Chairperson, I wish to reassure you, Chairperson of Zambia's commitment to continued cooperation with Namibia through the Joint Permanent Commission of Defense and Security in fighting these and other emerging threats. Zambia will remain committed to these efforts aimed at devising measures to ensure that we have sustainable peace and security in the region. Mr. Chipakupaku, who is also co-chairperson of the JPC, shared concerns on the rising conflict in the region. Chairperson, we are all aware that the growing threat of terrorism and violent extremism has continued to pose a security risk to the Southern African region. This is evidence 
chairperson by ongoing insurgent activities in some countries in the region, which have the potential to spread to other nations if not properly curtailed. Chairperson, in addition, transnational organized crime, smuggling, poaching, illegal migration, as well as human and, and drug trafficking remain as a source of concern as these threats not only jeopardize our stability but may also adversely affect economic growth in our two countries. In this regard... Meanwhile, Executive Director of the Ministry of Defense and Veterans Affairs and Chairperson of the JPC also expressed concern on the escalation of conflict in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The situation in Eastern Europe, the Middle East, North, West, Central and East Africa is worrisome as it has ramification effect to other regions too. We proudly appreciate Zambia's initiative in helping conflicts in the region during your tenure as a chair of the organ of politics, defense and security cooperation. Zambia and Namibia share long-standing excellent relations. Shilika Chabalengula Fuzanis in Sokopmund, Namibia. One of the stories making headlines in our news, the Mansa Municipal Council has procured a set of five earth-moving equipment worth over 21 million kwacha. The equipment will be used for the construction and rehabilitation of roads in the district. Mansa Municipal Council Public Relations Officer Rebecca Mawere says the equipment bought using the Constituency Development Fund, CDF, includes two graders, a backhoe loader, and a water bowser. To ensure that road construction and maintenance works within Mansa district are effectively executed, the Mansa Municipal Council has procured these state-of-the-art pieces of earth moving equipment. The purchase of the equipment has been completed to get us of the 2024 Constituents Development Fund CDF allocation to Mansa Central and Bahati constituencies. Council Public Relations Officer Rebecca Mawere has given a description of the equipment purchased so far. The local authority has received two graders, one for Mansa Central and one for Bahati constituencies. Um, also in receipt is a water bowser as well as a backhoe loader. So altogether, four pieces of equipment have come in. The local authority is still waiting for the delivery of a, a roller compactor, which is expected to be delivered at any, uh, at any point. With these machines, roadworks will be carried out with less challenges. People should really be happy because this is something that they've been wanting and uh, crying about for a really long time. So some of the issues, some of the concerns that they have raised, especially to do with access roads, are going to be matters that are going to be more effectively um, uh, responded to and tackled. Mansa Mayor Jiko Msuku has expressed happiness at the successful purchase of the equipment, which now awaits commissioning by central government. We believe that decisions must be made by the local people, and uh, we are responding to their cries. People have been complaining about the state of roads, which I do also um, acknowledge and appreciate that uh, roads have not been worked on in a long period of time. And uh, this has been because of the limited equipment that we've had in the recent past. Now, we now have more uh, machines. This will help us maintain roads in the district. Mr. Msuku is already targeting to open up and upgrade the road network within the district, which has been in a deplorable state for some time. We'll begin with roads that lead to public services, hospitals, schools, because these are priority, looking at the traffic that they, um, they take in. And then secondly, we'll move to the major roads within neighborhoods. These are roads that uh, open up a settlement um, um, that should be worked on. And then thirdly, we'll be working on the inner roads that lead to homes. For Zanis TV, Godfrey Chikumbi reporting in Mansa. Thank you, Godfrey, for that report. Government says it is committed to reverse biodiversity loss in the country by the year 2030. Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources Permanent Secretary Daphin Chabu says it is for this reason that government, working in collaboration with its stakeholders, 
wants to revise the 2015 National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan, NBSAP. Ms. Chawu has explained that in order to have an effective revision of the NBSAP, which will be finalized in 2025, the ministry has partnered with the Nature for Conservancy, TNC, and the worldwide fund, WWF, in setting up a team of experts to undertake the National Ecosystem Assessment, NEA. She said this during the opening of the planning meeting for the NEA held in Osaka. Meanwhile, WWF and TNC representative Moses Nirenda says following the adoption of the Kanung Monstrue Global Biodiversity Framework by COP15 in December 2022, decisions were made to translate the framework to the country level. The National Ecosystem Assessment will provide Zambia with an up-to-date, comprehensive and critical synthesis of knowledge and information on the status of the trends in biodiversity and ecosystem services and their drivers of change in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, the data captured in the National Ecosystem Process will in the future assist policymakers in making informed decisions on the management of biodiversity in the country, as well as playing a crucial role in the implementation of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework and other global biodiversity-related commitments. The process of revising the NBSAP provides an opportunity for addressing some of the challenges that still exist in managing and securing the critical biodiversity within the protected area network uh, that Zambia has. Uh, you all know that Zambia has dedicated about 38-39% of its land mass to uh, conservation and uh, biodiversity management through a series of uh, protected area networks that includes uh, uh, national parks, uh, game management areas, forest reserves, which are local and, and, and national, uh, but also through national heritage sites. Um, well, there is also a new level of, of protection, which is the uh, water resource protected areas, uh, which we are still to have a number that will be uh, gazetted. But we have challenges with securing of um, the 39% uh, of our land uh, that has been dedicated to um, uh, conservation. And some of these challenges are one, encroachment uh, and degradation in the game management areas, forest reserves and national... That item takes us to our first break. We have more news. Stay tuned. The Issue is a program that looks at topical issues happening in the country. Watch The Issue every Friday at 19.30 hours, only on Zanis TV, Channel 6 DTT and Channel 458 DTH on Topstar. Don't miss. Woman Thou Art is a program that offers counsel to the female folk sharing real life experiences and providing guidance to the women and young girls on necessary steps and conduct that will help shape and nature a sober society. Watch Woman Thou Art on Zenith TV every Wednesday at 18.30 hours on the Topster channel, channel 6 DTT and channel 458 DTH. We continue with the news. Senga Hill District Commissioner Elizabeth Goma has expressed disappointment with the contractor engaged to construct a deep tank and a staff house in, Kaf in Kapufi area for abandoning the project. We have more in this report. It's now 10 years since the contractors who were engaged to construct a deep tank and a staff house for the veterinary department at this center deserted the site. Livestock farmers in the area are not pleased with the development. For farmers, um, it's not good for the contractor to abandon this contract 
because uh, the government, they have, uh, we understand the government, they have already paid him. And uh, uh, us, as villagers and the farmers, we want this, this facility to start working because we have a lot of animals here. If you move on, if you need to know, but you have vandalized, Munshilaimo, Navy, and Chukuranga Chaika, and Pedachi, the home, Meru Tajawa, automatically in Sharaba, vandalized. I put you at two tables, two push at the people of our teeth, take off Yesu, flavor safe, Ero Cabit, what a homo bonfi, Wakumonapa, five take off Yes, Pandu, what if take over the two to more, homo bonfi, the steamer to Vepun, Amarway Tia Potunchet. The visibly annoyed Senga Hill District Commissioner Elizabeth Goma, who visited the site, has promised to follow up the matter to its logical conclusion. Okay, follow up and uh, the position as government, we need just to finish these projects that were started by our previous colleagues because it is our duty to make sure that we finish and people are so much interested in this and they are actually. They, they keep cattle here, you've seen for yourself. That we look for this contractor and see how much this contractor was paid. Don't say we are following you because you didn't do what you were supposed to do for the people of Kapofi village here in Senga. So we need to follow you. I'll make sure that all the projects that were abandoned in Senga, I'll make sure that we follow the contractors. Reporting for Zanis in Senga Hill District, Namsokwe Buindia. In a related development, Central Province Permanent Secretary Myuna Monakampwe has expressed displeasure over some stored projects in the province. Dr. Monakampwe says lack of monitoring and evaluation in the province has led to poor management of projects, which he says is a disservice to the people. He said this when a team from Ministry of Finance, Monitoring and Evaluation Department called on him. And Ministry of Finance Assistant Director for Monitoring and Evaluation, Danny Kafuli said his team is in the province to assess the challenges the province is facing in project implementation. Money has come to the provinces through constraints development fund, of course, but in terms of awarding of huge contracts, yes, sir. I want to say it without shame no, that sir. ministries are still holding on. And basically it's for one reason, maybe, and I, I don't want to conjecture the reason why people still want to to award contracts from Lusaka as compared to awarding contracts even to drill bores, contracts to build schools, contracts to build clinics, contracts to build bridges in the various provinces where these projects are carried out. And as a result, when we go there, we are total strangers to the contractors and they have no respect for uh, controlling our officers whatsoever because they are not answerable to them. They are not the ones that gave them those contracts. And so when you go there, you have to plead to this contractor to give you the, con the contract sum, how much he has been paid, the scope of works. All those are not being shared. I'm happy that uh, so far, I think through the guidance of His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zambia, through to sector to cabinet, we are now being guided to that. When there's a contract that is being earmarked in a particular province, the provincial controlling officers must be involved actively. So interested to look at uh, projects where um, maybe contracts for implementation have um, lapsed, and for that reason, implementation has been suspended, or indeed where um, contractors have left uh, implementation sites of specific projects and why and further um, try to see what can be done. News continues. Nutrition volunteers from 75 women groups in Pemba district are currently undergoing training in food preparation and preservation. The program is aimed at equipping volunteers with skills to prepare nutritious meals from locally available ingredients. Here are the details. The impact of the recent drought in Pemba district is still being felt, with many households struggling with food security. To address this challenge, the Minister of Agriculture's Kaluli Development Foundation has joined forces with the Minister of Health in Pemba to empower the community with essential nutrition knowledge. 
nutrition volunteers from 75 women groups in Siamle Agriculture Camp are undergoing intensive training on food preservation and preparation from the local available foods. Pemba District nutritionist Wabista Moya hopes that the knowledge gained from these trainings will spread throughout the community, leading to improved health outcomes. As health, we were engaged to help train the nutrition volunteers under this project under KDF. So for these volunteers, we've been conducting a series of trainings. For like for today, we had uh, the cooking demonstration where we are looking at uh, the local available foods in conjunction with the this drought that, that is happening. So we're looking at which foods can be brought and which we identified and uh, how are they prepared so that they suit and uh, be consumed looking at the, the body needs, especially for these under five children, the pregnant and lactating women. Going forward, we, we hope that this series of trainings is going to be projected out there in the committee so that other committee members are able to benefit from what these nutrition groups are learning. And Kaluli Development Foundation nutritionist Mildred Hibanyama highlights the project's core of enhancing the livelihoods of rural communities in Pemba district. Karo Development under Sulu Posekutu has got six components. Nutrition is one of the components. So our goal is to see that we have the health communities. We teach them how to prepare balanced meals, how to process and preserve vegetables and other things. Lida Sinagoma, a nutrition volunteer, has expressed gratitude for the training, acknowledging that it has opened her eyes to the importance of balanced nutrition for our children's health. <laughs> Fosen is news in Pemba District, Southern Province. Government says it will continue to attach importance to cooperative development in the country. Muchinga Province Deputy Permanent Secretary Matthews Chilekwa says this can be seen from the revised National Cooperative Development Policy, which was launched by government in April this year. Here is the report. He showcased his talent during this year's Cooperative Day, which was held in Impika District in Muchinga Province. Patrick Chanda of Chimpasa Cooperative in Impika District was among the many cooperatives that exhibited during this year's celebration of Cooperative Day. And Muchinga Province Deputy Permanent Secretary Reverend Matthews Chilekwa, who was the guest of honor at this year's event, said government will continue supporting cooperatives through loans and grants. Under the leadership of His Excellency Mr. The Republican president will continue supporting cooperatives through loans and grants so that cooperatives can grow their enterprises. I know that the provincial cooperative development fund will play an important role in financial inclusion of the embarked population through the fund. Members operating micro and small medium enterprises will be able to access affordable. Finance. Speaking earlier, Muchinga Province Cooperative Union Board Chairperson Christopher Stoney said it is encouraging to see an increase in the number of cooperatives formed under the new Don government. It is also time for us to reflect on what we have accomplished to have a better future, what we can do better to get our cooperatives. It is encouraging to have witnessed an increase in the number of cooperatives formed under the new, new Don UPND government. First question that the success of cooperative movement is not necessarily in the number of cooperative societies formed. It's of services and sustainability of enterprise and the cooperative engagement. And in his uh, vote of thanks on behalf of all the cooperatives in the province, Peter Simkoko made several appeals. Our appeal is that those cooperatives should not be politicized. We also appeal to government to ensure more cooperatives benefit from many government empowerments. We need empowerment so that you can service the community as well. Because the money that we have is not enough to sustain the community. This year's International Cooperatives Day, which was attended by various cooperatives in Muchinga province, was celebrated under the theme, Cooperatives Building a Better Future for All. Pamela Inamba reporting for Zanis in Mpika District, Muchinga province. 
This is Zanis News. Thank you so much for still staying with us. We take our second break and still ahead we have relief fund stories. Stay tuned. How I Made It is a program that delves into the many success stories of different people from all walks of life. Watch How I Made It on Zanis TV every Thursday at 18.30 hours on the Topster channel Channel 6 DTT and Channel 458 DTH. Zambia Today is a program that keeps you informed on various government policies and programs. Join us every Tuesday at 18 hours on the News TV, Topster Platform, Channel 6 DTT and 458 DTH. Don't miss. Welcome back. Over 20,000 households in Kalomo district are, are earmarked to receive emergency cash transfer funds to cushion them from the effects of the drought. District Social Welfare Officer Elizabeth Nsibi says the beneficiaries have been listed to receive the money up to May 2025. <laughs> More than 6,000 households have benefited from the ongoing government-sponsored drought response cash transfer program in Livingstone. Livingstone District Commissioner Eunice Nawa has flagged off the cash-giving exercise to the residents. Here are the details. They have filled this over Damba Central Market to full capacity waiting to be paid their emergency drought social cash transfer fund. These are residents drawn from the 20 wards of Livingstone who are beneficiaries of the government-sponsored Emergency Drought Social Cash Transfer Program. Livingstone District Commissioner Eunice Nawa this morning flagged off the payment of money to over 6,000 residents in the city of Livingstone. These payments are for this entry that targeted and registered households from across the 20 wards in Livingstone. I am pro all the beneficiaries to utilize the cash for the intended purposes of buying food and other house necessities. Mr. Moden Simawenga is a district social welfare officer for Livingstone and sheds more light on the program. About 6,931 beneficiaries. If I got to qualify with and our program is social cash transfer. Then he alimu it with six thousand six hundred and eighty-eight households. Iva hola gale imari. The beneficiaries cannot afford to hide their joy as they thank government for the empowerment. Nipa gurumba kamboga guti. Tuali jisibu yumu yumu. Burimbo boyuli mwa gawaji yuma yuma. Tito agari kuye ya iguamba guti. Tula jana. Memlikando, reporting for Zanis in Livingstone. And in Kitwe, government has started paying out emergency social cash transfer funds to vulnerable people. Here are the details. As the effects of the drought experience during the last farming season worsen in form of food insecurity, Government has started paying the emerging social cash transfer to the vulnerable to cushion the situation across the country. In Kitwe, over 2,000 vulnerable households are earmarked to benefit from this new initiative, which has since commenced. Kitwe District Commissioner Lawrence Mwanza visited selected pay points to check on the progress. We are grateful to His Excellency the President who made it possible for us to receive the funds and start paying the people that were, I mean, which were uh, identified. We are targeting here in Kitwe as a district about 24,777. That's uh, households that we're receiving this support. Of course, because of the drought, you know, the effect that the drought brought. The Kitwe District Social Welfare Department head is happy with the exercise. Uh, as a district, we have a total case load of 24,777 who will benefit from the drought response. These households will be getting 800 for the next one year. So far, we have paid in a number of areas and the response is very overwhelming and people are appreciative. 
The civic leaders and beneficiaries are thankful to government. We are so grateful to the President of the Republic of Zambia, Mr. Akainde Ichirema. We are also grateful for this program because, uh, as you can see, these women are getting empowered. They have something to put on the table. And at the end of the day, no one is going to die of hunger. So we are so grateful and we are hoping this program will continue. To our daughter, I'm going to show you how to pay the displacement of the emergency social cash transfer demonstrates government's commitment to ensuring that no citizen dies of hunger. Liz Ngoveka reporting for Zanis in Kitwe. And lastly, in our news, Minister of Commerce, Trade and Industry, Chipoka Mulenga, has called on investors to take advantage of the good policies that government has put in place and invest in various sectors of the economy. Mr. Mulenga says Zambia is the best investment destination in the region with a youthful and energetic human capital that is focused on production. He was speaking at the 2024 Forum of Jiangxi Enterprises on trade and investment in Zambia at Chibombo Multifacility Economic Zone, MFES. Chinese investors have held a meeting on the Jiangxi Enterprise Trade and Investment in Zambia to further enhance understanding of investment policies and the business potentials in Zambia. The forum has invited the Zambia Commerce and Trade Authorities, such as the Minister of Commerce, Trade and Industry, the Zambia Development Agency, and the Chinese Jiangxi Native Association in Zambia to participate in the forum. Zambia depends over 90% of electricity supply through hybrid power generation. To your management and leadership of the Jack C. Martin City Marathon, I want to employ and the would be investors that have carried our business and the already existing investors. And we strongly focus on investing in alternative sources of power in this Martin City Marathon. Solar, wind, and core energy production should be that focus, which also investing to provide an alternative for power generation in our country. In as much as it is a very bad thing of losing power due to high or a drought that we have experienced, but it gives this country an opportunity to think outside the box and invest in alternative power sources. Zhang Shi, Managing Director, Zhu Zhangfeng, says the enterprise has come with mutually beneficial opportunities. And also to provide a support platform for China's advantages in touches and high quality enterprises. To develop in cluster overseas and cooperate deeply with Zambia's local enterprises. The Zoom will put forward more preferential policies and improve the level of service in accordance with objectives of high, high standards. And Zambia Development Agency Director General Albert Halwampa says Zambia is best positioned for business. This is why you need to invest in Zambia. We are, we are so, so proud of our leadership. As you can see, the minister here to support us. The current government is pro-private sector, supporting you, the private sector, to come and invest in Zambia because you drive this economy. And also, the policies are consistent with the, what the private sector you know, uh, aligns itself to. Zambia. Jiangxi Mount Facility Economic Zone in Shibombo later signed eight investment agreements amounting to about 17 million United States dollars with Chinese investors. For Zanis News, I am Catherine Sakala in Shibombo District Central Province. Here now is your mind of the top stories. Burundi President to Grace Agricultural and Commercial Show. Rabies vaccination commences in northern province. Mansa Municipal Council procures earth-moving equipment.
plus government pledges commitment to reversing biodiversity loss. We end the news on that note on behalf of my sign language interpreter, Joas Shikombwe, and the entire news and production crew. My name is Emos Zulu. Enjoy the rest of the programming. Bye for now.